peace, wellness, and oneness. This is Omega Sun of the Well Chambers Experience, also Omega Sun's light and the light that touches the earth to form sun spot. We are the seeds, and this is the sun spot. So I like to thank you and uh, definitely give you praises for listening to this right here. And um, you be out, nigga. You tough, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the topic of the day. You tough as tenactin, you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you bounce back from uh, all the rumblings of life and things of that nature. Yeah, it's important. A lot of people talk tough. You know, they bring about this vibe that they um been through it all, seen it all. Um, but here's the thing. I would like to introduce you to what they call rites of passage. And there's rites of passages in every culture, almost every culture, for young women and young men. But I want to specifically talk about the young men because um, at this day and time right now, what we're dealing with is manly culture. You know, and it has gone astray. I'm straight up telling you just like that. It has gone astray. You can tell by the verbiage. You can tell by the action. You can tell by the, the habits. You can tell by a lot of things. And it's unfortunate. And we're going to have to get this back on track somehow. Because the true secret is that it took experienced women... And I actually said this in the uh, last video I did on my YouTube channel, Omega Sun's Light. How a mother knows her child and a father proves that child. A father proves that child through a series of events. And this is about the rites of passage. So let's get into a couple of rites of passages, passages that are known in... Um, in different cultures since antiquity. Okay, there's the, I hope I'm saying it right, Vantuaru, land diving, where they have young males from the age of seven to ten years old, as young as seven, have a, a vine, and this is in uh, the Brazilian Amazon. Amazon. They take a vine, you know, and hopefully it's cut at the right proportion. <laughs> hopefully it's cut at the right proportion. And they go on a structure about 98 feet tall and dive off the structure in attempts to not hit the ground, come back up, get you know, get caught and reassert it. And this is part of the process for them doing the rites of passage. It start at, like I said, seven years old to 10 years old. That's one. Everybody should be familiar with um, the Judas, Jewish culture where they have the bat mitzvah and the bar mitzvah. Bat mitzvah is for the women. Bar, bar mitzvahs for the men where they have to learn and be able to recite the the Pentateuch I want to say yeah the Torah they have to recite the Torah um, they have a big ceremony at the age of 12 to 13 a, communi a community event that's key a community event Meaning it's accepted by all elders, accepted by um, clergy, the rabbis, everybody in the community. No one understands this is going on. And they prove this child to be an adult by accepting Jewish law. And they have to recite what's going on in uh, um, the Torah and the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is the five books. Uh, the Torah itself is the Judaic law. Uh, it's the foundation of Judaism. You know, uh, depending on where you're coming from, um, the 
there's different factions of Judaism. So we're not going to go into that. But there's a proving ceremony that must take place. The Maasai culture, the Maasai warrior culture of Tanzania and Kenya, um, where they take a child, 11, 12, 13 years old, and huts, special huts are built for them by the women and the young women in the, in the, in the actual uh, society for later use. The first step of the ceremony is that they have to sleep in the forest alone. They are taken from. Well, let me just preface this. They are taken from their mother and are made to live with the other younger adults in the community. And this is to uncleave that child from. Uh, um, the, the the nurturing of the mother, so they they have to learn to stand alone and provide for themselves. There's a theme here, and I want you to truly understand where where we're going with this, right? When you uncleave the child, um, they they have to sleep in the forest. That means all the danger is available to them. Uh, all of all the danger is out there. Even the the self fear, the self doubt, is upon them. They have to prove themselves. And then once the ceremony starts to kick in, there's a singing and dancing period. Um, right after that, they take a concoction of uh, alcohol, cow's milk, and cow's blood. You know that's just their thing. You know, just because it's alien to you doesn't mean that it's outside of the normal, air quotes, the normal process of doing things. It's the culture that they develop in order to process what a warrior was or what a warrior is to them. Like I said, there's a theme here. They drink this concoction, you know, they they, they gain this um this kind of out of out of mind state of being you know because you know what um being intoxicated can do to people it brings some type of liquid courage and things of that nature i'm gonna stop saying that <laughs> it brings a, a thing of liquid courage and they learn skills um everything from military skill to oratory skills to the history of their people in this time and it seeps in it seeps in and for you to prove yourself you have to actually uh bring that out amongst the elders and be approved the maasai warrior there's also one um sata mawari sata mawari is 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 interesting. Or do I want to get to the man then? No, Satomawari, twelve to thirteen year olds. Um, where the shamans or the medical men and women of the 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 community take these bullet ants and pour liquid over bullet ants. First, they have to find the bullet ants. Those 10 to the, the 11 to 13 year olds they have to find the bullet ants inside of the forest i want to say it's in the amazon as well and when they go there it's already been done where a concoction was poured upon the bullet ants there and they have to put these makeshift gloves on with the bullet ants inside where their stingers are pointing outside of their skin. Somehow the way they put these um, specific gloves, they're, they're able to, you know, carefully put the place the ants where they're not stinging them as soon as they put their hands inside of these gloves. 
This is a part of a ceremony. This is stuff that has been uh, prepared for a few months to several months before the ceremony happens. So even before this thing happens, the children are selected. Yeah, there's a process here. There's a, there's a theme here. Stay with me. Because it's all about being tough. And we're going to get to all this, right? <laughs> so, the young men put their hands in the midst. They undergo a concoction as well, where they're inebriated to their unconscious. And when they awaken, also when the bullet ants awaken, the bullet ants are angrier than when they was when they were captured. And they wind up stinging viciously the hands of those young warriors that have their their hands in the um in the gloves. And these young men have to take this stuff for ten minutes and longer. Now the stings have venom in it, which may cause paralysis in the arms for a short time, definitely swelling and and and, and painful uncomfort. They are not to cry at all. They are not to whimper. They are not to flinch. And this stuff goes on for 10 minutes. It's stinging in your hands. Those that endure move on to the next stages of the ceremony where they get cured. They're accepted by the elders in the community and learned, uh, are properly learned in the, the next phase of society of military skill. Uh, their military, whatever their uh, community deals with, and how to protect and also animal husbandry. Animal husbandry is when you're able to um, take field animals and domesticate them, which is very important to the continuancy of said community. We're talking about protecting and providing, right? Yeah, yeah. build with me. We're building right now. Because we want to get to modern day times in a second. Another one is called the Mandan Hanging Ceremony. Right? Um, it's a older native tradition where the young men go into a hut and they are hooked on their chest their shoulders and their back to ropes that are hooked to the roof of the hut. And there's a reason why I have these two men behind me, so pay attention. The ropes to the roof of the hut and they are hanged by those ropes and they must endure. They must endure without yelling out there's a warrior cry and that's it but they must endure it's a form of bloodletting while this is happening there are skulls of their their ancestors great their grandfathers their great grandfathers at the end of the ropes and it's like their skull their skulls of their their um, ancestors are placed there and it's to chill them on. They are to hang until they are unconscious. Once they're unconscious, they can be let down. Then they're giving a, 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 the second part of the ceremony where they're also giving a concoction that involves with healing and inebriation. Because that stuff stings. Come on, man. You're getting hung by your, your skin. Ah, man. You don't want to hear me though. <laughs> you can hum. You know, but you're living. And then you're accepted and embraced by the elder councils. Ah, man. When I was looking into this, and I don't know, this, this is another thing. This is a rite of passage to make a video like this. And I'll tell you why. Because many people can turn on the camera and just speak without 
ever really getting into the information at all. You know, some people speak at liberty so much that they become tough guys. See how I'm wrapping this up around this? Because there's no high level of consequence yet where you're accountable for your word. People think that they can just say and do anything online without repercussion. Or when there is a repercussion, it's like foul play. It's out of bounds, right? What do these cultures and many other cultures as well? There's the uh, Spartan Helot um, ceremony where they have to bring in an animal to to the community um, in order to consider themselves a Spartan at the age of 12. They have to go through a military training that is very rigorous. Um, also, unclean from their mother at the age of seven years old. Um, the Inuit or the Eskimo of North Baffin Island, they have to go on a, a, a day and a half hunt, prove themselves to the elder huntsmen of the community at 12 years old. Let's bring this up to modern times. Even though some of these communities and civilizations, uh, uh, societies still do this at modern times in their own way, it is not the same as days of old. There was a, a, a special significance to these ways. Uh, if anybody saw the Mandalorian, you know, one, I, I love that joint. <laughs> Mandalorian shouts out to you, Star Trek, uh, I mean Star Wars. Um, uh, their topic, their, their their mantra to go on was, this is the way. And it was a set way of life. It was a set system of circumstances that they had to adhere to to make them who they are. A Mandalorian was never to remove his mask, his helmet. When they upgrade in materials it was armor the armor was a sign of status showing you defeated so much in your progress all these things are placed in mythology and then driven by the heads of those communities for the next generation to fulfill so this is important. When you take the mythology and you twist it and warp it, you actually suck the juice, the, the, the necessary power, the force out of what made that society its own entity, its own greatness, its own reality. And you transfer that power in a way where the youth, the next generation that want to come along and want to try to contribute, their energy is dissipated. I say that to say this. The youth of now are basically at a disadvantage because these these ways, these systems, these understandings have not been placed in an mm-hmm. early, in an early uh, um, methodology, in an early way of communicating from the elders. Now, you may have an institution like the church, you may have an institution like the mosque, and you know, Ramadan Mubarak for everybody that's celebrating there. Um, the the rites of passage are different in each community and doesn't involve the theme that I was talking about just just a minute ago. Each theme each theme is developed around the sacrifice of pain of the flesh. 
and though it sounds barbaric and though it sounds ant antiquated and um sometimes you know in, in your the mind of your <laughs> your tickled your tickled fashion of the western ways you figure that um this is savage and it's totally not it's not primitive primitive either when you talk about the suffering of a person and their chance to seek enlightenment it comes with pain it comes with anguish it comes with embarrassment it comes with being not totally understood and that's the force that is broken around these ceremonies and also show who's truly driven to be a head warrior, a head chief. You know, when I spoke about um, on, on the last video, the, the evolution of the matriarch, the, the, the divine feminine and things of this nature, things of this category, well, I said no nature, right? but it's all nature. <laughs> Sunspot, that's what we're doing. When I spoke of that, I wanted to hammer down that that council, the older council of, of, of women, the, 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 from which we all come, proved who would be who. I would like to say genetically. I would like to say through nurture. I would like to say through learning and understanding with that young child's personality was that's either male or female what that young ch child's personality was in nurturing it to a point where they can get that child to understand who they were give them the proper information and guidance to make the decisions that need to be made to move the culture forward if you can take anything out of this, you make sure you take that part right there. That's solid. <laughs> That's solid. Now, right behind me, you see on the thumbnail, um, two young men at that time, their ancestors now, all praises due to them. And I don't care what you believe. I don't care. I mean, I do, but, you know, as long as it's righteous, right? I'm not going into what you believe. I'm not going into what you process as being uh, righteous or um, if you can get to the essence of truth and liberation. I challenge you on that. These two men behind me were the 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 the, the leaders of, the, of their time in the essence of truth, will, and liberation. Knowing what was taking place with their people, knowing fully what the consequences were, and being able to stand out and become natural leaders, they were able to take one of the greatest superpowers this earth has seen in the French under Napoleon of all people <laughs> and fight them to a standstill so much that the ritual behind that is that the Haitian people to this day still have to pay France only because the corruption of power that has transpired now let's let's take a deeper look a little bit you may see their clothes. This is Toussaint Levouture behind me, who was like the main known leader of the movement, the, the Haitian Revolution, 1804. Also, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, great general, great uh, um, strategist, strategist that was able to move the morale of men to bring the, the, the next wave of people that wanted to liberate their people. You know, as you see, they still have 
the French British garb because you know France and, and Britain they had their their similarities at the same time. One uh, um one time I'm gonna talk about the six European countries that what actually at war with each other at one point but then consolidated their efforts to you know strengthen their resources and then push themselves mm -hmm. into um world history we're going to talk about that a little later but as you see they still have the uniforms and the, and the, and the garb that was available at that time um uh, 1804 mm -hmm. this stuff is not taught in classical elementary school too much it's actually downplayed um just like i said about the the um the process of understanding with the the scholarship of the goddess of uh woman veneration in history what they did with maria marija gumbutas this history is definitely suppressed and downplayed and even put away like you won't even hear about it and it does a disservice to anybody wanting to learn um, liberation for any people. Being able to develop a, a sense of self in the world and having that, that fight and determination to fight back injustice. I don't, it doesn't matter who you are. There's a story out there for you. And this was a rite of passage to understand what these stories were about. These men went through rites of passages by learning the history of their people at early ages. This is not done today. So just like in my previous um, uh, video on YouTube, Omega Sons Light, you know, shameless plug, right? Uh, shouts out to my Anchor app family. Thanks for, for always listening and, you know, uh, following along. It, it does a disservice to those coming next because, like, like from my previous uh, um, video, the Lamumbo bone, the Lamumbo bone and the Aishango bone, which were valuable calculating devices in early early man um around the neo the paleolithic neolithic times when nobody was actually doing things like that you know because this is not produced and, and presented properly in the classical elementary school setting we miss out on young geniuses people that have the self-esteem or people that can can garner that 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 history and and, de and develop themselves off of it with the self-esteem and self-development to say yeah i can do that too yeah this stuff is inspiring me to learn more about what math is this is inspiring me to learn more about you know the power of people in history and what they can do and what i can add on and contribute to it that's very important. That's very important. And and nowadays it's a disservice for any community to go through that. It's like what we talk about the dumbing down of America. It's not actually just America. It's the dumbing down of the, of the planet itself. Because power is a position of those that have leverage to know information to move them forward and give information for those that need to stay where they are so power can be maintained. So this is actually a challenge for you. This is a rite of passage in its own way for you to learn more. In this day and time, you may have a young child say growing up in the city where everything is crammed together you no longer have to fight for food in some respects because when you're in total poverty every day is a fight for food 
every day. You don't know when the next meal is. But on the flip side, you can have what they consider food and be in a food desert. Nothing nutritious, nothing that can build upon your chemistry to make you a greater person in the mind, in the heart, or physically. When a person is um, nutritionally deficient, the chemicals in their body starts to deteriorate or um, even become uh, deplenished because there's no energy getting to it. There's no uh, real nutrients that's helping to develop their cells and helping them to think straight. You know, and many people are exposed to harmful things in the community that they use to self-medicate. You know, be it from alcohol, be it uh, um, drugs, be it uh, um, personal personality issues. And this is all this is about being tough, right? That's how I started. Because what's tough is going through those pains, realizing who self is, self-enlightenment, self-development, self-knowledge, gaining new knowledge and, and, and uh, um, the data and information that can help you push things along. That's tough. It takes years sometimes. Definitely takes dedication, takes patience. Sometimes patience in the midst of having some of the most wildest situations around you. I used to work in a community center and I can't say too much, but I can definitely say there were some kids that had very tumultuous um, households, but some of the most brilliant kids they got it quick they got it quick and as long as they were exposed to the right information and were able to express themselves you would see a glow in their eyes you would see a glow in their countenance you know the their radiance in their face a new power in their stride they felt like i know what i'm talking about i deserve this and i can I can, I can accept this because I can accept myself. A lot of this stuff, the rites of passages that we have now are about pleasing somebody else. And this is very uh, painful. This is very uh, upsetting. Because no one should be able to validate your journey except you. And whoever, you know, whatever you believe in, whoever you believe in, which is a whole nother story, you know, understand that you believe in what you believe because it was passed down to you, given to you. It was an accepted system, it was accepted faith that was given to you. And you can either accept it or reject it yourself. And it all takes place in where you grew up in. Also with that. It all it, it it basically congeals together with what you see other people do and how it applies to you. You know, because we're uh, um, calculating beings, regardless of what you believe in. We see what's actually going on, what can benefit benefit us in the in the specific time that we're in, and what won't benefit us in the specific time we in as well but there's also a long run a bigger picture that if we're just able to you know step outside of our ego at times we can see and develop new ideas and a new viewpoint on life and get on that track you know and and that's a rite of passage as well that that, that, that discernment and people use a lot <laughs> people use it a lot but don't develop the necessary consistency for it. Don't develop the necessary um, vigor that it takes to solidify it for other people to see it as well. 
and, and that's been our contention for for a time. I mean, I like if you are in the Anchor app, thank you for going on a, a good minute, and I'm you know going to cut it short soon. But I've talked about the difference between cussing and cursing. A person can curse you out without using actual cuss words. The curse is developed in the intention of the word. The intention of the vocal tone. Sometimes it's not just what you say, it's how you say it to a person. Sometimes it's not how you say it to a person, but how you even feel about the person and the, your agenda and intention behind what you're saying. Sometimes the cussing can bring people in. Oh yeah, you can be a foul mouth all you want. But it also turns people off because there's a level of control that you must have to properly facilitate your thought. And we're using English words right now, you know, American words, whatever you want to say. <laughs> it's a bastardized language filled with a whole bunch of different cultures. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But... Your self-control is what's being looked at. Your self-control. Your ability to bring people in. And that's a rite of passage as well. You have to be able to understand how to get to each and every one in their own lane. And at the same time, communicate and bring them together. Also, seem like you're speaking to one person at one time. That was the power of these two men. Also, Dutty Bookman, Dutty Bookman, who was, what would it say, like a, you know, they say maroon or, you know, quote unquote Jamaican, quote unquote maroon. He was from another island, came there, and the voodoo practice, the voodoo practice invigorated the people. He developed the ceremonies that invigorated the people. To say yes. My child's liberty is more than me. Sacrifice. Patience. Mm -hmm. Pain. Without those rites of passages. A lot of these groupings. Would not have seen another generation. Would not have had the ability to sustain long enough to keep their histories and stories intact. And as we move forward into the next stages of, yeah, it's kind of an evolution, but it's a, a computer evolution going on. That's why I'm talking to you through this camera device. Check out the wealth chambers coming soon uh, in the future flow show where we see the advancement of technology taking place, especially in this day and time that's going on right now, where a lot of programs, a lot of um, information is being done through video conferencing. Um, there's a lot of other new and exciting things are gonna take place, but with that needs to be a rite of passage. But you tough, right? You tough. You talk that mess. Yo, man, you come, you, you come near me. Boom, 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 boom. Lay you down. Shit. Yo, I'm, you ain't built like that. You ain't built like that. Yo, yo, me and my people was just like, yeah. It's from a state of a state of powerlessness. It's from a state of powerlessness because as you speak like that. There are real movements taking place. There's real trainings taking place. Close quarter trainings. Close combat trainings. Far range, down range uh, rifle training. Shotgun training. Dueling with a knife. Survival training. Learning how to fish. Learning how to farm. 
learning code speak, which what's got us in the situation right now. There's a lot of people that, you know, they were able to listen to a video, listen to their favorite entertainer, talk this stuff, the melee stuff, the rah rah stuff, as we used to say, uh, um, and develop it in their vocabulary and put it on their back like a jacket to be a security blanket like they knew what they were talking about and some of them you know ear hustling found out what a, you know a little something was and that did a disservice to people that were really doing it in the streets so yeah I get that figured out goofy goobers y'all get that figured out now goofy goobers let a lot of stuff in there and you need to be in a tough person doesn't have to announce themselves. Usually you'll see it in their eyes, right? But real doesn't recognize real anymore. I kind of get that now. So a person have to be proven. And what we have now in this culture is an exposed culture. Oh, you ain't like that. I could tell. I could prove it. Watch. I'm gonna go on your, you know. I'm gonna get all the information I get on you, right? And I'm just gonna expose you, and it's gonna be like that. It's gonna be like that. Whatever. <sighs> that doesn't mean you're tough. Oh no, she talking hot mess, man. I ain't even trying to hear all that. Man, she really wanted. She would meet me at the bone, 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 bone. Then we can get it on. Pull up. Pull up. That don't make you tough. Keyboard banging. I'm gonna type this in. Make sure I get under in the, under her or his skin. Uh, you take that, you sucker. That don't make you tough. This is something that can't be quantified, especially in the days where people have these other weapons. <laughs> <laughs> a child can pull a weapon. A child cannot have the heart and still fight. Sad but true. That doesn't make you tough. In the days we say, you know, shoot it off. Give me fair one. Give me five. Shoot the five. Shoot ten. Still not tough. Tough is protecting your community and be able to speak out against the injustice in your your vicinity. Toughness was being able to look at the records of those that came before you, understand what the mission was, and put yourself on the front lines as a soldier in that mission. Fred Hampton tough. Huey Newton tough. Geronimo Pratt tough. Afeni Shakur tough. Pam Africa tough. We can go further. It doesn't matter what culture you're in. I, I just celebrate the culture that I'm in. But there's tough people that didn't have to throw a punch at all. What's tough is having the patience and the will and the dedication to deal with people that are out of their minds. That lost the way of integrity. That decided to say, it's whatever. You take me as I am and not as, you, not as I could be. Forgot their potential. Forgot their potential. Don't want to use their potential. With Jim Jones, you know, shots to Jim Jones, capital status, all that. Dipset. <laughs> he had an album called Wasted Talent. Powerful. The title alone. Because that's what's happening. You get a young, young man that may be upset with his condition, you know, six foot three. 17, 18 years old, doesn't play ball, 
maybe not um what they call it physically adept adroit when he reaches his arm he touches the ceiling of his room he says nah I can't do this he goes outside sees a young woman beautiful young woman that only caters and placates to young figures that got it says I want a woman like that if not her it says you know what I'm, I'm gonna come out here and get it I'm gonna come out here and get it then stench in jail maybe mess up on a pack maybe even come up maybe he comes up and he forgets about that woman because now the allure and the attraction of a certain lifestyle has developed new sensibilities in them new access his eyes lit up to the city night so he goes all the way in I'm going to be fierce in these streets I'm going to be a beast they're going to recognize my name hook a crook and he goes all the way in He could be lost. Going all the way in. Could have been a soldier. Could have been somebody that could change the community for the better. Some do. I'm not saying that's out of the outside of the loop. There's always a light of redemption. There's always a light of redemption. If you're willing to accept the consequences of that redemption. You know that hustlers withdrawal. That, that time when you say, you know, I got to give this up. And next thing you know, you almost lose everything. <laughs> Tough. Tough. This internet stuff, not tough. You're, you're speaking from a safe place for the most part. Speaking from a safe place for the most part. Not Somebody can't just grab you through the screen and pull you through. And give you that lashing. And most people do this because there's no consequences or repercussions that they feel are available to them. I don't know. It's out there. It's out there. Uh, just listening to Willie D. Shouts out to him. Willie D. Live. Um, shoot. Uh, what can you say about Fifth War Willie D.? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, prayers up to Scarface. We're going to talk about that on the block. Um, that's one of my favorite uh, top 10 artists. But Willie D from the Ghetto Boys, you know, stand-up dude, man of integrity, man of respect. He covered a story about a young man that was on um, IG Live, of all things. You know, the place that uh, officers come to see what's going on and <laughs> do half their work there. Yeah, that part. Young man on his live, talking about, you know, y'all corny, y'all... Poom poom, y'all ain't gonna do nothing. Talk about his uh, ops. Pull up, pull up. Guess what happened? They pulled up. Shot the young man. I'm glad he's alive, but look what you bought. Look at that energy that you bought. Some people feel that that energy, that vitriol, that in mitigated gall, as Stephen Smith says, to entice people in is a rite of passage until the hammer drops and the karma comes. Uh, you know, I don't like to use karma as a weapon. It's not that. It's just a, it's a, it's a, a viable form of energy. When we talk about speaking things into existence, it's like I'm speaking words right now. These words have a certain type of power. So there's certain words I won't say. So I won't invigorate a certain energy to come back to me. If I want you to learn, I'm talking words to help you along with that learning. That process of information, uh, of, of that process of receiving the data. That's why I start off with the chatter, earthly matter. You ready for this divine data? It's divine to me, 
because I've seen it change in other people's lives. I've seen it change in my own life. It was a rite of passage. Trust me, I had to go through the same things everybody had to go through. Everybody had, well, you know, unless you was a privileged child. And even then, there's still rites of passage you have to do there. You're learning about your family's businesses. You're learning about how to navigate in the social life, in your, your community, in your school. If I can't excel, how can I excel? And when if I can't make it? Are there programs and resources I can use to help develop my mind? Is there anybody I can speak to, a, a, a mentor? I like to say Jed, DG, DJED, Jed. Jed is like a judge. The judge is like the guidance for you to understand law and peep that. And it's a, uh, you know, ancient Egyptian thought, just to, you know, sneak that in. Do I have one of those? Can I listen? Am I coachable for you uh, sports athletes? Am I coachable? Because being coachable can get you to the next level. Being coachable can help you reserve your, your energy and your resources at times of need. So when it's time to really express and show out, you're able to do that effortlessly. Just like I'm telling you this, I'm learning. This is all a process. This is a rite of passage. This for me is a rite of passage as I enter into what they call um, sophomore seniorism. <laughs> I'm not a junior yet. <laughs> Maybe even freshman. I'm not a junior yet. I'm still young. I've had this silver that you see, this uh, salt, since about 18. You know what I mean? Uh, I had locks. I went through the, the changes. I went through my metamorph met metamorphosis. I'm still going through metamorphosis. We don't know what's going to transpire in the next 10 years. If we do not pay attention to what's going on now, we may lose the efforts that can be built upon. We may lose the methodology that we can use and ascertain to develop a new cultural skill, a new character. It's, these are kind of dire times. But at the same time, it's a blossoming of 